Happy Monday from Torpedoes and Tarantulas, everyone, wherever you are in the world. I hope you're having a great day, and thank you for tuning into my channel once again. I want to apologize for the slight shakiness of the image. That is how it's going to have to be throughout due to the, uh, the topic of the video, the equipment that I have, and the wide angle of the shot, unlike my feeding or rehouse videos, which are close angles, I'm going to have to freehand the camera to be able to show you what I'm going to show you today. But I wanted to share with you guys something that I'm trying that hopefully will help you, some of you out there who are starting in the hobby or just new in the hobby or like me, a uh, small guy. I hope you just, it's just some, a money saving tip that I'm trying. I'm breeding my own feeders because I've got so many tarantulas now that I can no longer afford to go to the online retailers every few months and get some roaches or some super worms or whatever it is that I need. So now I'm starting to have to breed some of my own feeders. Now, some of you who may have been following me for a while may know that I have successfully bred crickets, but I'm starting to steer away from crickets because I just, um, they get away too easily. They can climb better than roaches and things like that can, and they can jump out. And although everybody says they smell horrible, they do have a bit of a smell. But I never thought it was completely revolting. The smell was not why I steered away from it. It's just because they die so easily and they can get out so easily. So I'm going to steer away from the crickets. Right now I have a breeding tub of lateralis roaches going on which is actually my favorite feeder and for my larger tarantulas I've been feeding super worms I've still got a few of those left and I decided I would go ahead and try to do a super worm colony as well maybe not a colony but you know breed some so basically what I did and I watched a video another video from another guy on YouTube on how how he did this now Mind you, my setup is, is a bit different than his is because everybody's setups are, you know, different as long as you, it's all the same concept. And uh, one thing that I did read about superworms before I watched this guy's video was that as long as they are kept communally, they do not pupate. But as soon as you separate them, they will go into the pupation process. So what you do, these are just a bunch of these little... Um, deli cups or condiment cups or whatever that I had left over from earlier this year, my Black Widow slings, I cleaned them up and I isolated a few of my larger um, super worms and they, two of them have started pupating in the last couple of days, but I just wanted to kind of share with you kind of how to do this. So in the first tub, this is the first tub right here, this has some super worms in it. Now that is not super worms, that is molts, they actually as they stay in the tub with each other, they eat and they grow and they will molt like a lot of other arthropods. And so every once in a while you have to take those bits of molt out. And notice the um, the material, the media or whatever that I, I use in the, in this bin for these superworms. Now trust me guys, there's superworms in there. But I really like this... Uh, it's just straight straight oats. You can get it at Walmart for less than a buck for a big can of this stuff. Um, because it is loose, it doesn't pack together. When they start to lay their eggs, the, as this stuff shifts around, it will all work its way to the bottom. That's the, the good thing with these things too, guys. The feces or the poop or the waste or the shit, if you will, filters to the bottom as well. So there's never really much waste on top. Now this tub right here is just straight mealworms, and I, I mean superworms. Now this guy would be a pretty good size, but a little bit bigger than that. And then, like I said, what you want to do is just separate them out of these cubs, oh, cups excuse me, over here. And when they get into this basically permanent curled up position, they're getting ready to pupate. Now this has been probably two weeks since I pulled these guys out. And you'll notice right here, these are the two pupa that I have, you know, so they look much different than the the uh, super worms themselves. Well, that is the pupa, and you can see down there beside it, basically that final molt where it shed off that super worm skin and turned into a pupa, and it's very much alive. They were squiggling around really good yesterday. And then here's the other one. And the crazy thing about them is when they, that pupation process is not a long process like a molting with a tarantula. 
I came home yesterday. I found one of these had already pupated. 15 minutes, 15 minutes later, I looked, and the other one had pupated. So I was like, wow. So what we're going to do now is I've got another tub set up that I'm going to put the beetles in, or the pupa in, to turn into beetles. Basically the same setup as the uh, superworms over here. It's just got the oats in there, and that will help, um, again, with the, uh, the poop and everything, but also... Once these beetles lay the eggs, they will sink down underneath the substrate where they can kind of stay warm and moist, and then they will hatch, and then we'll turn into these guys that we have over here. So we'll go ahead and take this first one out, if I can get a hold of it. It's already squiggling quite a bit, as you can see. Looks like something from a, a sci-fi alien movie. But there we go, guys. There is the first beetle pupa. You can see the legs and everything already on it there. Boy, these things are creepy. Anyway, just going to drop it in there. Then I'm going to take the second one and put it in there as well. And then once we... And of course, it's, uh, it's, it's wiggling around as I touch it. So there you go, guys. There's at least one pair of beetles starting. And then, of course... Just gonna throw a little piece of carrot in there so that when the the uh, the beetles emerge, they immediately have something to chew on. But that's basically kind of it. Now I watched a video from another guy. If I remembered his name, I would give him a shout out, but I cannot remember. But I watched him, and that's basically how I learned the whole isolating them. Now he had kind of a little toolbox or tackle box type of thing with. Uh, all the smaller little compartments in it, and he would put a, a superworm in each compartment. And then once they pupated, he would put them in a tub like this and leave them in there. And then, of course, they turn into beetles. They go to eating, they go to breeding, and then they lay their little eggs, and they sink down in the bottom, and then they emerge as the superworms. Now, of course, this won't be... I won't have to work as hard on this as, say, my roaches, because I have way more small mouths to feed than large ones, so... This will be just kind of an experiment. The roaches I haven't really documented yet. I'm still really, I'm just testing a lot of things out. And once I really figure out how to really get my uh, Red Runner population growing, I will kind of let you guys know about that. Now, I did put them in, all in a larger container earlier. So fortunately, I won't have to mess with them too much anymore because I think that's a lot of the problem that I've had with my success rate on hatching the uh the roaches as I've been moving the, I've been pulling the egg sacs or I've been moving them around and apparently you only get about a 50% hatch rate or less with that so they are in a permanent home now. Once I start getting babies booming in there I will do a video on that maybe but there you go guys that is something that I'm trying out and I kind of shared basically the, the two or three steps that there are to um hatching your own or breeding your own mealworms. Now, you don't have to really put any food in here or water or anything like that. Once you separate them, just leave them in the cup and they will squiggle around for a few days and then they start to curl up in this position and every once in a while they will uncurl and move around. But once they really get into that position and don't move, that means that they're getting ready to pupate really quickly. Now, bear in mind, these guys do have a bit of a smell as well, but it's not as bad as crickets or at least as most people claim crickets are but this is just something i'm trying i hope you enjoyed this video maybe it was educational for you guys hopefully it was entertaining although i doubt it but thank you for putting up with me the whole time anyway uh, if you did like this video though give me a thumbs up and a comment if you didn't give me a thumbs down and comment and say dude don't do videos like that anymore just stick to your feedings or whatever and i might comment back and i might not but anyway um don't forget, guys, take care of yourselves and each other. Like, comment, subscribe, share this video and others. I hope you guys all have a great night. God bless.